Greetings Redlings wherever you are in the world. Thank you for stopping by and watching this video. In this one we're going to talk about pressure and vacuum hazards and I'm very grateful to L'Oreal for sponsoring and working with me on this presentation. But before we start and just to let you know that there might be a quiz and there might be a checklist with this particular video. You can find them on the show notes and the YouTube channel and also on the website www.saferworking.com where you can download the app uh, which is Safer Working and you can also get that from the Android and Apple iOS stores. It's always worthwhile to start with some definitions and especially when it comes to pressure and force. So let's review a few basic principles. Force, as we know, is pressure times area. So this is like thinking of it as many small weights sitting on an area. So the larger the area, the greater the force. The weights may be small, but if the area is large, they will of course add up to a very big force. Let's look at an example. As we said earlier, if, if force is pressure times area, then 10 pounds per square inch of pressure on roughly a plate 12 inch by 12 inch square surface area will be about 1440 pounds of force. And those of you who like it in Newtons, that's about 6.41 kilonewtons. I'll put it in brackets what these other units are because I'm sure some of you would prefer it in the more up-to-date units as well. So that is really equivalent to an object that weighs 1440 pounds or 653 kilograms. That's quite substantial. When it comes to pressure and vacuum, can you get hurt? Absolutely. And you have to be especially careful with large surfaces like manways. One PSI may not even register on the gauge, but it's enough to send a hatch flying if all the bolts are removed and the gasket is stuck. Now here's an example of a low pressure hazard. This door had 2.8 PSI behind it. That's equivalent to about 19, 15 pounds of force or 8.5 kilonewtons. The door only weighed 15 pounds, 6.8 kilograms, so when it came loose, it slammed open and seriously injured a worker. Here's an overpressure tank situation. In this, the tank was fitted with a high-level alarm, which was accepted and then forgotten, a pressure control system, which was out of service, a pressure relief valve with a flame arrestor, which was found to be blocked. Now, when the product was transferred into the tank, it got overpressurized until the roof ruptured and even though the pressure was only a few psi over the hydrostatic it caused significant damage as you can see from this picture. When you look at vacuum hazards this concept also applies to vacuums however in vacuum systems the pressure is pushing inward and not outward. The pressure comes from the atmosphere we don't feel it but a tank does when you pull vacuum on it. Atmospheric pressure at sea level is about 14.7 psi, therefore full vacuum is minus 14.7 psi. Let's talk a little bit more about vacuum hazards. Now, if a tank is not designed for vacuum, then it's a high probability that that tank will be damaged when it's under vacuum. Low pressure storage tanks and rail cars are particularly vulnerable to damage. This is why low pressure switches on the suctions of blowers are so important. You can't manually shut the blower down fast enough to avoid the damage if the blower pulls a vacuum on the tank. Not only is the equipment damaged, but the hydrocarbon contents may also be released, known as a loss of primary containment, and it can cause significant widespread catastrophic type damages and events. Let's look at vacuum examples a bit further now. When the pressure inside the vessel is lower than the atmospheric pressure, the force acts inwards with sometimes spectacular and of course undesirable results. But what happened in this particular situation? You can see the tanker was, well, this particular tanker was being steam cleaned and at the end of the job, the hatches were closed. With no vacuum breaker fitted, as the steam condensed, the tanker then imploded. Here's another example. In this, the tanker was being pumped out, the hatches were all closed and the vacuum breaker failed to operate. So you see, it's quite significant, the damage here. But this problem isn't just confined to rail tankers. Here's another example where a vent was involved and a tank was being painted and the painters had covered the vent with a plastic sheeting, as you can see in this image just behind the scaffolding there. So when operations started to empty the tank, it collapsed before the plastic sucked through. 
that's a significant situation, a catastrophic event there, especially if you consider loss of primary containment of hazardous chemicals and materials that could have been in the tank. So the final thoughts on this very short video about pressure and vacuum hazards is that never underestimate the potential of low pressure or vacuum condition to cause damage. And be especially careful when you're working around or removing large manways or hatch covers. Make a final check just before the job begins to confirm that all the pressure is relieved. It only takes one leaking valve, just a little, and that's enough. Leave a few bolts in, but loose, until the gasket seal is broken. If the system has little pressure, this will keep the manway from striking someone. And it doesn't look like a big hazard, but under the right conditions, pressure and vacuum hazards can be significant and can cause catastrophic events, loss of business and loss of life. My thanks again to L'Oreal for sponsoring and working with me on, on producing this presentation. It's a short video just to emphasize the importance and dangers associated with pressure and vacuum systems. So once again, do sign up to the YouTube channel Red Risks and of course, please download the app Safe for working so I can keep in touch with you and notify you of any updates and new stuff as we produce them. Thanks. Speak to you soon. Bye for now.